What about the lawyers around this president? The lawyers uh, giving bad advice, the lawyers passing along bad information, straight up conspiracy theories. Is there a mechanism? Is real harm being done? Is there any jeopardy left on earth for them? Yes, and indeed, a federal judge today in Washington, a very respected judge, Judge Boesberg, referred and took a complaint from Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Arizona, and a bunch of other Trumpist uh, folks, looked at it, said this is basically garbage, and referred those lawyers to the professional bars for saying for potential sanctions and disciplinary action. And, you know, it'd be one thing if these allegations were made in some sort of good faith. But, you know, like just looking at Trump tonight, he keeps repeating this nonsense, and it's been debunked by 60 different federal and state courts, including courts and judges that he nominated himself. Trump's favorite attorney general, Bill Barr, rejects this nonsense. Georgia's Republican governor, Georgia's Republican secretary of state. And then you also talked about the thorough debunking by the Georgia election official today. I mean, this is all nonsense. And the thing that's the most disheartening, Brian, is that, you know, there's, as you say, a dozen senators and 140 members of Congress who's going on with this nonsense. There are not two sides or both sides of this. This is a serious, simple question. Are you an American? Do you believe in democracy? Or do you believe that a thug like this could install himself in power? It's nothing more complicated than that. And those people who are siding with Trump on this nonsense and the lawyers, the representatives in the House and the senators are just as guilty of anti-democratic activity as Donald Trump is. And Alexi, back over to you, because the opposition uh, is growing on the Democratic side. Uh, I know your reporting has delved into this. Who is pushing with 16 days remaining for a second impeachment? And is anyone listening to these folks? So Congresswoman Ilhan Omar of Minnesota came out today encouraging uh, that the president be impeached because of this phone call he had with Georgia's secretary of state saying that he has committed a crime. And in the statement when she's calling, she, she mentions this exact notion of timing, Brian. To your point, there are just a little over two weeks left that the president has in office. So they're really kind of running up against the clock. But you see Democrats kind of scrambling to figure out how they can really hold President Trump accountable. So while some more progressive members like Congresswoman Omar and Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez are saying that this is an impeachable offense. Other progressive members are pushing to censure the president. Others like Tim Ryan, I spoke with Congresswoman, Congressman Tim Ryan earlier today from Ohio, and he sort of said, look, let's not deal with that. We have other things to deal with, like a public health crisis. Let's just let this guy kind of get out of the door and move on with the things that we need to deal with, the tasks at hand. So you really see how Democrats are sort of split in their approaches. But the one common factor here, Brian, is that they just want to hold him accountable. They say that they have seen the president break the law and do dubious things over the last four years and seen the ways in which some say he's felt and become more emboldened because of not being held accountable because of those things. So that's sort of where you're seeing this push from progressives come from. Now, of course, they're aware of the realities of the timing and the logistics that come from that. But I think that's the big picture right now, Brian. It's progressives and other members of the party wanting to hold the president accountable, even though he's only got two weeks left. So, Gabe, I have one for you and be polite because he's standing by to join us later in the broadcast and can hear us. This is from Bill Crystal. This was 45 minutes ago on Twitter. The headline is, OK, you want it outside the box. One, Pence would prefer not to subvert the Constitution on January 6th. Two, but Pence feels a strong sense of loyalty to Trump. Three, and Pence wants to avoid a demand that he pardon Trump upon a Trump resignation January 19. So Pence resigns as VP tomorrow. Gabe, the playing field is all yours. Uh, well, I would say, uh, with all respect to, to Bill, that that is indeed quite outside the box. I mean, I think if uh, Vice President Pence was going to resign for his uh, displeasure with whatever Trump is doing on a given day might have probably happened at some point over the last four years. But listen, the overall point here that there is some serious concern among people who are probably around the president and certainly a lot of people uh, in the Republican Party and the conservative movement more broadly is obviously a very present one. Question remains what they can actually do about it. I think 
by, you, you know, you saw, you alluded to earlier, the op-ed from the uh, all the living defense secretaries, you know, that was spearheaded by Dick Cheney, of all people, who obviously is no one's idea of a resistance hero. Um, but is Mike Pence going to be the one to stand up and resign? I doubt it. Uh, you know, it was pretty telling when President Trump uh, tonight threatened Pence essentially by saying, you know, if he doesn't do the right thing, I'm not going to like him so much. But what that actually looks like in practice, it's very hard to tell. You know, the consensus is, of course, that Pence doesn't actually have any power to do anything on Wednesday when this uh, will be certified. Uh, there's not really any indication that he's planning to do anything other than say, well, uh, it's certified. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.